it's Sarah. My camera is all right. Anywho, look what I have. I couldn't resist. This is a, a kit that I got at BJ's, which is like, it's called Berkeley Jensen. And it's like a Costco type store. And around the holidays, they come out with cool stuff. And I was looking around and it's a rock painting kit for spooky rocks. Um, I'm going to show you what it comes with. So I already took it out, but I could look at the colors and the, ugh, I couldn't resist. Okay. So it comes with a book, which I love. And it comes with the rocks. You got four rocks. I'm using other rocks just because I had rocks, but you could definitely use these rocks. These are just rocks. It comes with a spite, oh, two spiders. OMG, I didn't realize that. And two googly eyes for like the little one of the monster monster rocks. You also get five different paint pots. And I've already based a few rocks to, to paint with you guys. You get two paint brushes. These are just, I would say, like around a number four round. That's what these are kind of seeming like to me. Not the worst brushes. I mean, the hairs aren't up. Uh, you know, I mean, I could definitely load this. Let's load it. I meant to get clean water, but... Ooh, it doesn't look too bad. So I'm just going to go into red. And I'm just getting it some juicy paint on there. I'm going to see what happens. So say, oh, let's just throw another coat on this rock. Because I already based a few things getting ready for the... Uh, These are good. This is perfectly good to use. Now, I'm not sure how it'll go with the details. The other thing I would say when you're using red, if you're base coating, undercoat with pink first or add a coat of white. Really just mix a little bit of white into your red and then on your second coat, the red is going to pop. Otherwise, red takes at least like four coats to, to cover. So, um... Yeah, but this wasn't bad. Using this brush did just fine to base coat that. And the other thing is, when you're base coating, just go over the, see I have a couple ridges because I was rushing, but generally I try to like always paint out the ridges. So when I put the paint down, it could leave a ridge. Just keep going over it so that you get as, as smooth a surface as you can. Now this is a really bumpy rock, like it's got divots in it. But I'm going to do this one. This is the one I'm so excited to do because we're going to do a... Uh, I'm going to do try and do a couple with you because while one rock is drying, I will paint the other rock. You know what I mean? So to stay in real time. So this one, see? You can kind of see how ridges... I'll come down a little bit. Um, I, I have to tighten up my camera, I think. I'm going to go ahead and do a second coat of white. Um, now, that being said, I'm going to open this paint pot. I haven't opened any of the paint pots. I just grabbed my own paints because they're ready to go. And so let's see what we get. Okay, there's a cover. So let me just take a... Oh, it looks nice. It looks good. Um... So what I'm looking for is just not clumpy, bumpy um, paint. I'm just going to take the end of this brush and like give it a stir. It's pretty thick. That's nice because you know what? You can always add a little bit of water to it if it's too thick. But this is good. This is nice acrylic paint. So that's good. That's exciting to know. Um, and I might as well, I'm going to use the other brush that they provided to do another coat on this because this is going to be an eyeball. So I'm going to go right into this paint pot. Now, here's the thing. When I base coat, I always get some water on your brush first, blot it off so it's not drippy, and then pick up the paint because now I have water and paint. It just makes it less clumpy. Um, it doesn't seem to be covering as well as my white did. So I, it's kind of sheer. It's very see-through. I can see everything I did. I want to see if this is true. So I'm just going to take a baby wipe and just gently wipe off what I just put on. Try not to wipe off the undercoat. So I'm just going to cover that up and I'm going to use my 
I like the brand Delta Ceram Coat or um, Americana. Anyway, so I'm going to take, I'm going to do a second coat of my white and see if it covers it better. I'm not sure. I mean, it could just be me. I haven't painted in so long, but I wanted to take a break from um, the mosaics and I just couldn't resist. These are so cute. And I remember last year I painted some um, Halloween pieces and it was so fun. So Halloween is right now. See this just, yeah, it's a different, it's definitely a different quality paint. This is much thicker and I can just tell. The other stuff, it just take it would just take you more coats to get it to um, be opaque. All right, so let me just let that dry. So let me go through the book with you real quick. So it gives you this cute book. Now, first of all, all the color is total inspiration for me, and I'm a great copycat. The problem is there are no actual patterns like I'm used to from decorative painting but she just gives you a, a very nice picture and I can copy that and I think it will I think it will turn out just fine but there aren't actual patterns so like you know she has you sketch it out with a pencil first um, the spider's web seems pretty easy you just have to be able to make straight lines the pumpkin just paint it orange and then use your black to I think she did beautiful artwork that was the other thing I really love the artwork but this is the one I'm, I'm gonna do this one with you guys just the haunted house I really like that it's super simple because you're just doing a silhouette with the black um, and I'm gonna do this ghost well we'll definitely do the ghost I don't know about the house but I I want to do the ghost because it has glow in the dark look so I'm, I'm assuming this paint pot right here this white one is glow in the dark so we, we're gonna dot our ghost with the with the glow in the dark paint and then the rock will glow in the dark so I think that's fantastic um, so let's get started so it says here what you'll need so you have a pencil black white purple green orange glow and the glow in the dark paint and you'll need a small and a large brush and a protective finish this fun ghost rock will raise your spirits for sure. So it says, use a round rock for this project. So I found one in my own stash that I had. And paint a black circle that almost covers the front of the rock. And I went actually a little further around because I was covering up another color. Um, use a pencil to trace the outline of the ghost onto the black circle. And I'm just going to wing it. I'm actually going to use a chart, uh, this is not a charcoal pencil, a pastel chalk. Let me move, I have to clear my space because I have too much stuff on my desk and it gets very, uh, and I don't like that everything is crooked. I don't know why. Anywho, we'll have to deal with it. So I'm going to come in, and this is how she shaped her ghost. But we don't have to shape our ghost like that. But I do want to, you know, I'm going to fill the space. I'm going to leave room for Boo. B O O. And then I'm going to kind of go around that. So I'm going to make his head over here a little wing, I guess, and a little tail type thing. He has another arm over here. His head's kind of big, but that's okay. I don't really like that this went to I'm gonna I'm gonna give him a fatter body so see this is just my drawing so I can erase I don't think do I have a q-tip I don't have a q-tip handy but I'm just gonna take this baby wipe that's the good thing about charcoal pencil you can clean it up and then I can always touch it up with um, uh, black paint all right so I'm gonna use my white just because um, I have it and I'm going to get like a number three round. I'm going to, this is a number two. Here's a number three. A little bit of paint, on, I mean, sorry, water on my brush first, blot it on a paper towel. Then I pick up the paint. I'm going to have to show you how I do this because I don't want you to feel like I haven't shared. 
it's hard to see white but you go in your paint bucket get water on your brush it's drippy dab it on a paper towel now I come into this paint puddle and kind of load my brush so that it's not just a clump of paint it's a little bit of water and a little bit of white paint and I'm gonna change the shape of this because I don't like the way he came out we're gonna just make his head a little smaller I'm gonna make his arm a little wider see how I didn't go down as far so basically the little drawing is just your guidelines and if you're happy with your ghost shape then just fill in like a coloring book but I just I wanted to um, kind of fix a little bit of the shape I just didn't like it I think I might make and my boo I might raise it up a little bit so I might make him a little wider this way make his body a little fatter I think I'm a very visual person it's it's I have to see things in order to uh, so I, it's not in my head it doesn't just come from my head I have to see it first so that's why sketching it is, is a great help to me. So see, I don't like the way that arm was before, but I fixed it. So I like that. And I think I might give him his little tail a little more of a point. I just like that better. He's a little more fluid that way. My boo is a little low. I think I'll put my boo up higher. So I can take that off. We have to let this dry. And I don't know why I don't have Q-tips because, guys, Q-tips are a great tool to have. But I'm just using a baby wipe wrapped around my th uh, finger. And I'm going to take off those chalk pencil lines. And let's see. So the next thing I'm going to do is write boo. So I need a liner brush. I'm just going to use a small. This is actually a very small. Uh, I'm going to go with a little bit longer. This is a number 18 slash zero. So it's very thin bristles. But I'm going to, again, water, blot, and load my brush. Don't just grab a little bit of paint. Um, it's all over the paintbrush. So I'm just going to write boo. I like that B. Because you can still have time to take it off if you don't like it. Uh, that's a decent O. And there's an exclamation point. That looks cute. It's a rock for goodness sake, right? Okay. So I think I can probably start making dots except for that's probably the last thing you do because if you put your hand in it, it's such a pain in the butt. So we're going to do the dots at the end. I have to let this dry, so let me move over to, I'm going to move over to this rock. And I'm going to do this, uh, see this witch would have been cool too. But I want to do this. So I'm going to grab some yellow. Let's see if they put yellow. See, there is no yellow in the, um, I'm going to use like, should I use antique gold or... There's no yellow that they gave you from the store, so you're going to have to buy a couple colors. Um, I'm just grabbing. This is called cadmium yellow, and I'm going to put a little bit of that out. And we're going to make a circle, so see, number two. I'm just going to use my pencil again because I am a visual um, person and just make kind of an idea I'm gonna use this is gonna be the so the tops gonna to be up here it's a decent circle and maybe it should go a little lower because it's supposed to touch the horizon line so I'm just making it a little bigger all right and then I'm just gonna use that same Number three round. Number three rounds <coughs> excuse me, are very 
versatile brushes um, because you can flatten them out and you can get a lot of um, coverage and you can also do stroke work. Yellow again it's not a very opaque color so you may need a couple coats but I'm putting the paint down and then I go to the edge. I put the paint down in the center of the moon and I mean you could make this white or it looks like she did a little highlighting on here but you can make it whatever color you want you know I don't have the imagination that a lot of you guys have so I am happy to take inspiration or direction from another artist I just it just also it saves me from having to think about what I don't have to make any decisions I can just know where I'm headed so I'm gonna make it kind of like this way I think my horizon just based on the rock I'm gonna you know I mean I could do it this way or but just based on the rock I'm gonna uh, we have to let that dry, so I'm setting it aside. Come back to my little ghost, and I'll do another coat of white. There's a little... That was just a line of... Um, so again, rinse your brushes. My water is so dirty, too. Because I was just base coating. Look, I'll show you. I just did this piece, which oh, you can't see. I just did this mosaic, and I base coat the back so I have to seal the back and sign it and I'm gonna clean it up tomorrow but it's pretty good I like it so yeah so I had my brushes out anyway so I thought well this is a perfect perfect time to just share this little cute book I got and now I mean it looks pretty kid like but listen I love um, let's see whimsical whimsical is my go-to because there's not as much pressure um, to do it like realis realism is not my thing. And whimsical, anything goes. You know, I mean, unless you really believe in ghosts, I've never seen a ghost. I don't know that I believe in ghosts. Um, but I never say never because I don't, nobody's ever proved they don't exist, so I can't, you know what I mean? Anywho. So this is just a little pretend whimsical cutesy ghost that's fun and it's going to look so cute. And you know what I was even thinking? You could put these in your Halloween treat bags for the kids. Like why, why not put a rock? I mean that's like Charlie Brown, right? <laughs> I bet Charlie Brown would have loved to have uh, one of these painted rocks though. And um, yeah. Or... You could just leave it uh, around the house at Halloween time as a cute little decorative piece. It's kind of crooked, but that's all right. We have to let that dry. I think I'm going to go with just the two coats. Come back and do a second coat. Now, the, the thing is, if the first coat is not dry and you go back in there, you will pick up what you put down. You need it to cure for a little bit of time at least. So make sure, I mean, it's still damp, but I'm gonna go for it and see what happens. And you can use a flat brush to do this. See how I flattened out my round though? And I have a lot of paint on here and water. I put it down in the middle and then I work my way toward the edge. And again, I keep over stroking the ridges so that you don't leave bumps and lumps. That's the idea. Oopsie, went out of lines there. And if you keep pity patting in it, you can pick it up, so let it leave it. Set it aside and let it dry. I gotta let this dry too. I, I could do another coat of the white, but I mean on the boo, but I think he looks pretty good. I kind of want to extend this arm a little bit because this arm seems a little short. Give him like a finger, kind of like this one. Oh my gosh, you guys. I don't know who among you have Apple TV, but if you do, you have to watch 
Ted Lasso. You have to. It is the most feel-good experience. He's a soccer coach in England, which is very dear to my heart as well because my mom was from England. Not the part they are in. They're in Richmond somewhere. Their team's Richmond. But anyway, see that looks a little too... No, it looks okay. I think when I fill it in, it's going to look good. Um, it is... Uh, let's see. I can't think of his name. Ted Lasso is played by... Ugh, you guys know who it is. I can't. It's just not in my mind right now, but it'll come to me. Um... And he's from Texas in the show. In the show, he so he's an American who comes to England to to coach soccer, which they call football. And he just brings the team together. It's so good. It's so good. They won all the Emmys at the Emmys, and it's so good. And we, you just, ugh, you'll be so happy if you watch it. So anywho, um. That was just a, another public service announcement. <laughs> I'm doing you a public service. All right, I'm going to go away and clean my water, and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back, and I'm going to work on the house for a minute. I got out some black, and I'm going to just take you through what I would do. So she doesn't really say, you know, it says use a pencil. Let's go ahead and use that. Um, try to put some lines, some guidelines. So... Let me first find my horizon line. It's going to go and then it's going to be a little bit like uh, the house is going to go here. Can't really see it. I know. Don't worry. And then there's going to be trees over here. But there's also like great uh, tombstones. And there's a fence, and then there's going to be a ghost and a bat. A um, lot, a lot to put on here. So I'm just going to grab my number three round and <clears throat> use black. I always go into the paint first. Did I push record? Yeah. Okay. Blot, and then load my brush. So I have paint in all the bristles, and I kind of, kind of. Pull it to the outside edge to kind of take off any lumpy, bumpy bits. Um, and just, I'm going to wiggle in kind of like a little bit of a hill. So I don't want my horizon line to be straight, straight. I'm kind of making it a little hilly. And there's going to be a house there too. Alright, and then we're just going to fill in the ground. She put some nice streaky uh, pathway to the house in there, so that's cool. I'll tell you about the artist, too. Um, and at the end of the book, it, it shares a little about her, so I will share that as well. I'm not going to be too perfect on camera. I just want to get you guys through the main detail line. So I'm going to switch to my liner brush now. Actually I could probably have uh, used that because I'm going to go big first. But we're going to outline the house first. Let's see what she says. Use a pencil. Draw the graveyard and the house with a pencil. Use the black paint and a fine tip brush to fill it in. So I'm just going to go make a little roof and then it's like a, a skinny house just really skinny it might make it a little wider but let me see how this goes um, I am, I am really trying not to be a perfectionist, like I'm trying not to be too, but it's nice to just, there you go. So I just made it a little pointier over there. Um, gotta let that dry. Now I'm going to try and put in some tombstones, right, or grave markers. 
So I'm just going to use a little round brush and just pop those in one, two. How many does she have? And she highlights them too, so we'll be able to see them better. So I put four and we're going to also put in a tree, two trees. I'm going to come down. So I'm just using this as my guide. I'm going to load my brush, and this is a much finer line tip brush. And I'm going to try and put a tree, and I'm just going to, I should start at the bottom. And just wiggle my way up. I think um, the guy, the like true, true green guy is here, whatever his name, you know, that like sprays your lawn or something. And I'm going to do another one over here. Just push down and then just let the brush kind of peter out as you get up to the branches. You know what? I'm going to have to go close the door um, because she, she shouldn't be out there if he's spraying stuff, you know. Um, and you could put little, as many little branches as you want. There's supposed to be a bat up there too, so I'm going to hold the rock up a little so that I can, I'm just going to go like I'm going to make a body, and then like Batman, I'm just going to go around and around and make one, two. Fill that in, and then you can give them ears. shaking. I had too much coffee. So that's my bat. He's rough looking but that's a bat. And then we still need a ghost and I think I can put a ghost right here. So I'm gonna put with the, a little bit of a thicker brush just because I have I don't want to have too thin of a line so let's see. It's kind of like he's coming out like a genie. He's kind of coming out like a genie from the graveyard. So I'm going to make like a circle. I really don't want to have to do this again. That's his head. And make his body go down like that. I got to get a smaller brush too. And I'm going to just make little ghosty arms. Let's see. Good enough, I'm guessing. It doesn't really look, it looks like a cross more than a ghost. Um, there is a little fence, so what I'm going to do to make the fence is just really thin lines. I'm just going to go, and it could be wickety, rickety, rickety. So just kind of go, follow the horizon line. fancy um all right and that is I think gonna be it I am going to fill in the bottom a little better with the black and then we'll go do our ghost real quick because I have to use black for his face and um, the ghost will be done faster I don't have much paint on my brush, that's why it's not. Alright, so that looks pretty good. 
I'm happy with it. Let me just let that dry. I have a fan on, so I'm just going to set it over here by the fan. And I'm going to grab my ghost, and we're going to put a little face. Oh, that's not the ghost page. A little face on our ghost. And it says here, keep the eyes small, the eyes and mouth small to start with, and slowly add more paint around them. So I'm going to use my littlest little liner brush first. And some black paint and try to keep this small first just going to make a smile he's a happy ghost and then just make like kind of fill it in that looks good but this stuff grows on you so just don't go, don't keep going, just stop when it's, I think that looks good enough. He's got a face. What else do we need? Look, hers is much bigger. Um, you know, and that's the thing. It does, I don't have to, see, I could totally ruin it if I go bigger. I did, and I managed. I could go a little. That's it. I'm stopping because I don't want to overdo it. It says... To fill in the background, dip the end of a paintbrush handle into the green paint and paint random sized dots all over the stone. Where's the part with the glow and the dark dots? Repeat the dots with purple and orange until the background is completely full. And then it says, use the brush handle again with the glow in the dark paint. I want to do him. I want to do his glow in the dark paint first. So I'm going to grab this glow in the dark paint. I'm excited about that. And I'm just going to use the, the end of this brush. But this is exciting. I've heard of glow-in-the-dark polymer clay, and I've used it, and it's really cool. I used it on one of my under-the-sea pieces, and I did an um, octopus. It's very cool, and it's right near a light. And Anyway, all right, so I'm just going to take and just start dotting. It's hard to see because it's see-through. All right, I'll, go, I'll do it off camera. All right, I'm using the end of the brush like it said. Where did that one go? Um, because when you use a bigger, like I had the stylus out here, when you use a bigger dot, you can dot down. So anyway, this is a stylus. I'm going to just dip right into this green. And I don't want to cover everything because I want to add purple and what else did it have? Orange. So we're just going to put a few green ones. I'm doing like three at a time. I like it. I'm going to switch to purple. Oopsie. And I'm not shaking this up or traditionally if I were dotting something, the consistency of the paint of the paint really matters because you want it you don't want it to be you want it to dry in a nice dot like anyway. But for this, it's just a cute little thing we're doing. You don't have to be... I mean, if you wanted to, you could water down the paint a little and get it to the exact consistency. Um, you could use your own paint. You could use also um, pearlescent paint or metallic paint. I have a metallic purple. That probably would have looked so cute. So just for today... I'm doing it as quick and easy as I can and I'm just using what is right here in front of me um, all right I think I got a little bit of purple everywhere I don't know if you can see it I'm gonna come in closer sorry the little dots all over the ghost I covered him with that glow-in-the-dark paint so excited to see that and then I'm gonna grab a little orange um, of course, I don't have it handy. 
orange, orange, orange. This is called Cad Orange. Because they only gave me green, purple, glow in the dark, white, and black, I think. Oh, here's orange. They did give me orange. I didn't even realize that. Okay, sorry. My bad. So I'm just going to fill in. wherever there's a space and I think I'll go off camera and I'll finish them but that's it for him because see on hers it's really filled and I, I like that look I think it's fantastic oops he's not even in the shot and because dots are so dangerous because I stick my hand in it I just feel like I don't want to do this on camera I'm going to show you when it's done all right so I'm going to set him over here where I had him in, in the oh boy in the air of the fan and we're gonna go back to our little house I have to add um, yellow paint for highlights and reflections so first we're gonna do use a pencil to draw windows and fill them in with purple and orange paint ooh alright so purple I'm gonna use that little liner brush or this is a number, I don't know, I don't know what it is, it's small. And I'm going to go into this, grab some of this purple, but then I'm going to put it down over here. And I'm going to mix a little bit, just a tiny bit of water. I'm just wetting it so that it'll move. And it's not, the. I can tell it's like not the best quality of paint. I'm going to rinse my brush. And then I'm going to put the windows in. So she had, it looks like the top windows are purple and then she did a couple orange. So I'm going to just copy hers. So I'm going to put one here, one here. Let me come down because I know I'm far away. And it starts to really come to life. So in other words, this needs more coats because this paint is so sheer I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a purple down here I want to use a purple door instead of yellow and I'll do see it's like so see-through it might be a gloss I'm not sure I'm going to use the orange, no, the yellow, she said, right? So the yellow, I had out the cad yellow for the other windows. I like the using a couple colors, too. You see, these are things that I wouldn't have thought of necessarily. I probably would have made all the windows yellow. Um, put a big one here. And there's like a little crescent moon one. See how the, the brush is a little fat. Okay, got it. Yeah, you can't even see the purple. The purple just dissolved right into the... Um, so I'm going to use my own purple. But we're going to use that yellow with a liner brush. And we're going to... Um, what is it? make these little highlight lines on the um, oops sorry about that book got my book wet so we're gonna make a little let's see how she says to do it using a small brush with a fine tip and yellow paint add highlights and reflections from the moon that, to the house trees and graveyard so I'm just gonna load my brush with the yellow and let's make I want to make a little path adorable and then she's got these little like swirly lines I needed more paint we're gonna highlight to the right of the tombstones so that you can see them 
to the right um, on our little ghost as well just a little shine a little moonlight right <clears throat> a little bit down the left side of the tree if it's thick enough and on the house she's got it kind of right where the um the, the oh is there a cat on the roof oh that's a bat i thought there was a cat on the roof so i'm just gonna go down oops that was way too dark i want to get the paint kind of thinner and just subtle highlight I think it's cute. I really got to add purple though. We got to find a cute purple color. I have metallic purple. Let's see. This is like a gloss. I think it'll show up. This is an enamel. I don't know. I, I could be just grabbing a, another. Whoop, it looks much thicker. I always add a little bit of, or I don't add water, but there's water on my brush. So let's go ahead and put in these. Sorry, I can't talk, I guess. Windows and door. I'm going to do a little bit more yellow on the um, other two windows because they're not opaque. And then we're going to put little like window lines on there. You should always turn the piece. Don't forget to turn the piece if you need to. And I'm going to use black to fix the, the shape of that. But that's it. Look, it looks so cute. It looks haunty. I like it. I think that's it. Let's see. Handy hand. If you don't have a brush with a fine tip, use a permanent fine tip marker. Um, use a fine tip brush again and paint lines on the windows with black paint. And that's basically it. I could highlight my um, bat too. I like it. I'm excited. So I'm just going to take this little liner brush and the black paint and we can fix everything, sharpen everything up. I'll show you. So I'm going to fix this window. Am I in the shot? Yes. I really wanted it to be like a crescent shape. So I'm just trying to make it into one. And then this one I can definitely fix the, like make it straighter. I'm going to put a few lines in the window. And we'll do one on the top window too. Oh, and the purple ones as well. But I think I wanted to highlight those. And the door, maybe give it a doorknob. Um, I think I want to, oh, I should have done a little line on the top window maybe. I don't have to. Um, what else was I going to do with the black? I think that's it. We could highlight the, the the purple though, just a little. Like put a little, like reflection on the on the maybe on the door. It's kind of wet. I watered it down too much. There we go. Cute. I really like it. I think it's adorable. Even though you can't really see those purple um, windows. Now I'm going to go back to the... I'm going to finish my um, 
this guy. I'm going to finish dotting him. And that's it, you guys. Let me come up. Happy Halloween. This was so fun. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. All right, I also, I forgot to tell you who the artist was. So this is the Rocks All Done. Don't forget to varnish. So you're going to put on a sealer of some type. Um, you can spray it or paint it, but just make sure everything's dry. Make sure your dots are all dry. So I dotted the heck out of this one. I can't wait to see if it glows in the dark. And I did add some white to the purple because I just didn't think it popped enough. But let me have a look back here. I think it gives you a little thing about the artist. Here she is about the author. Amanda Rogers first started painting canvases in 2016 and two years later she switched to painting rocks and was hooked. Her favorite things to paint are hearts, bunnies, and mandalas. Um, let's see if she has a, a YouTube channel or anything. Nope. Um, no. And let's see. It's published by Hinkler Party Limited. Um, anywho, I just wanted to share that. Uh, there she is, Amanda Rogers. So maybe we could Google her and see if she has any other stuff. Um, but there's still a couple more I want to do. I'm going to do my eyeball. I got to go cook dinner first. I'm going to paint this again. So yeah, I, I'm sorry about that. I just wanted to share. I forgot to share the author. So paint some rocks. All right. Happy Halloween. Thanks for watching.